The primer of Katipunan, also known as Cartilla ng Katipunan, is written on 1892 by Emilio Jacinto. It was made mainly for the Katipuneros. Upon joining to be one of the Katipuneros, members are required to read the Cartilla and cling to its code of conduct to change the Philippines for better. Erole Katipunero believes that changing the way Filipino thought and acted was the most important things to be considered. In 1896, there is what we called duties of the sons of the people that was written by Andres Bonifacio that is strictly followed by the members of the organization. This decalogue embodied what Bonifacio's beliefs. Bonifacio would then later adopt Jacinto's Cartilla ng Katipunan as the official teaching of the Katipunan. He adopted the Cartilla and named it Decalogo that mainly focused on one's duty to God, country, neighbor, family, and Katipunan and himself. It tells all about honor, charity, and self-sacrifice for the beloved land and also spoke and warned about traitor and disobedient. In difference between Decalogo and Cartilla, Cartilla is more and much longer and more philosophical. It shows concepts of virtues living as lessons for self-reflection. The amazing side of the Cartilla is not only a leading for the Katipunan members, it embodied moral and nationalistic principle for all Filipinos. Rule number one, the life that is not consecrated to a lofty and reasonable purpose is a tree without a shade, if not a poisonous weed. The first code of conduct simply tells us that we must have a purpose-driven life. We must know how to set our goals and find meaning to our life because without knowing our purpose, we will suffer from unwanted situations. Rule number two, to do good for personal gain and not for its own sake is not virtue. This means that we must not be selfish. We must do good deed not to earn praises. A deed done only for fame is not worthy to be called good. Rule number three, it is rational to be charitable and love one's fellow creature and to adjust one's conduct, acts, and words to what is in itself reasonable. It gives us the real definition of true act of kindness. Being kind is simply seen by the service and loved one gives to his, her fellow men without asking anything in return. Rule number four, whether our skin be black or white, we are all born equal. Superiority in knowledge, wealth, and beauty are to be understood but not superiority by nature. The fourth rule highlights equality. We are all born to be equal no matter what trace, status, and educational background we have. Our society may have divided us into groups, but we must all understand that no one is a superior of anyone. Rule number five, the honorable man prefers honor to personal gain. The scoundrel gain to honor. A good person must understand that honoring oneself also means he or she values honor rather than personal interest. True honor means having a high moral standard behavior. Rule number six, to the honorable man, his word is sacred. The rule six tells us that we must be a man of our own words. Whatever said must be done. We must do things that we promised because we can never take back what we have been said. Walk the talk. Rule number seven. Do not waste thy time. Wealth can be recovered but not time lost. Everyone must understand the importance of time. We usually focus ourselves on worrying from different material things. This code of conduct 
tells us to treasure time because we can never take it back. At the end, we might end up having regretting for the things we weren't able to do. Rule number eight, defend the oppressed and fight the oppressor. We don't have the same strength but we can help one another. We must choose to fight for what is right. Fight with the weak people who needs your help and comfort. And fight those people who keep on putting others down by oppressing them. Rule number 9. The prudent man is sparing in words and faithful in keeping secrets. This highlights the importance of trust and confidentiality. A wise man is a man who thinks of what he says and keeps what is needed to be kept. Rule number 10. On the thorny path of life, man is the guide of women and the children. And if the guide leads to the precipice, those whom he guides will also go there. All of us needs to be a model for everyone because whatever they saw in us will also be followed by the people who sees us. And a true man leads his family to the right path by showing them that he is righteous. Rule number 11. Thou must not look upon a woman as a mere plaything, but as a faithful companion who will share with the penalties of life. Her physical weakness will increase thy interest in her and she will remind thee of the mother who bore thee and reared thee. This principle is about women, that every woman deserves to be respected and no man shall see them as an object nor a pastime. Just like what they always say, a man who don't respect a woman do not respect his mother who gave him birth. Girls deserve to be loved with full respect and care. Rule number 12. What thou dost not desire done unto thy wife, children, brothers, and sisters, that do not unto the wife, children, brothers, and sisters of thy neighbor. Every action that any man do is important. Every action has its own consequences. We must not do bad things against other people if we don't want other people to do bad things against us. Rule number 13. Man is not worth more because he is a king, because his nose is aquiline, and his color white, not because he is a priest, a servant of God, nor because of the high prerogative that he enjoys upon earth, but he is worth most who is a man of proven and real value, who does good, keeps his words, is worthy and honest. He who does not oppress nor consent to being oppressed, he who loves and cherishes his fatherland, though he be born in the wilderness and know no tongue but his own. The thirteenth principle is about having the right character and good values. A man's life is not measured by what is his status in life nor with the things that he possess. Instead, it is in his character and his love for the native land. Rule number fourteen. When these rules of conduct shall be known to all, the longed for son of liberty shall arise brilliant over this most unhappy portion of the global and its rays shall diffuse everlasting joy among the confederated brethren of the same race. The lives of those who have gone before, the fatigues and the well-paid sufferings will remain. If he who desires to enter the Katipunan has informed himself of all these and believes he will be able to perform what will be his duties, he may fill out the application for admission. The last code of conduct shows the desire of Emilio Aguinaldo. <music>